sacred night as we begin this most sacred triduum, the three days of Jesus' suffering, his death, and resurrection. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, 
Every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it either from the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. And you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of thanks. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. Be reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, For the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. 
he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight are very rich in their spirituality for us as we embark on these three days. The setting for this Holy Thursday evening liturgy is the last meal that Jesus celebrated with his disciples. Now, in the Synoptic Gospels, that is, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they describe this last meal as a Passover meal. And therefore, our Old Testament reading tonight from the book of Exodus gives the how-to instructions on how this meal is to be carried out. But most especially important in that instruction is that they were told to take some of the blood of the lamb from that freshly slaughtered lamb. And then they were to spread that blood on the two doorposts and the lintel of each Israelite house. And when the Lord comes to destroy the Egyptians, the Lord will pass over each house marked with that lamb's blood. Now, attention should also be given to the fact that this meal must be eaten in haste, with everybody prepared to move quickly. For Jews, this event will be remembered and celebrated as a major saving action of God. And such, it was commemorated annually. And this is what Jesus was doing with his disciples at that last meal that we call the Last Supper the night before he died. And the Christians were very quick 
and seeing the connection of the symbolism of the slaughtered lamb and the crucified Christ. With Jesus once again, God is at work, at work saving God's people. Jesus is understood then as the new Paschal Lamb being led to the slaughter. Now tradition has it that when Jesus celebrated this last meal with his disciples, he did not strictly adhere to the ritual prescriptions of that annual Passover meal. At a certain point, he deviated from the traditional ritual and then inserted some very dramatic words over the bread and one of the cups of wine. And one of the earliest records of what Jesus did and said at that moment is recorded in our second reading tonight from St. Paul. That reading predates the Gospels. And Paul makes it very clear that it's not just something that he made up. This tradition was something that Paul received from the teaching of the early church and therefore something that he was handing on as he received it, unedited. And he records that Jesus took bread and said, this is my body that is for you. And then he took a cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This action and these words are to be carried on by Jesus' followers in remembrance of him. This is recognized by much of Christianity as the institution of the Eucharist, which in many churches has been carried on from that time until now. And through the tremendous power of remembrance, we Roman Catholics believe that this action and these words make really present the body and blood of Christ. But now let's turn to tonight's gospel. It still finds us at that last meal that Jesus celebrated with his disciples, but now it's St. John's version of that story. And unlike the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John does not focus on the institution of the Eucharist at this meal. He did that earlier in the Bread of Life discourse in chapter 6 of his gospel. But instead, at this meal, John narrates the event of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And there is impressive symbolism here, impressive symbolism of the service that Jesus performs for his disciples. Taking the form of a servant, he serves his disciples by washing their feet. This symbolizes the ultimate service that he was about to do for them when he offers his life by being killed on a cross for the salvation for all. Now, even though this meal does not seem like a Passover meal in John's presentation, it's important to understand that what goes on here is not unconnected, not unrelated to what Jesus did with that bread and wine in the institution of the Eucharist. Both of these actions, the institution of the Eucharist 
and the washing of those disciples' feet. Both refer to saving events initiated by Jesus for the benefit of his disciples and for all who ever believe in him. Added to that foot washing event is that for John, this is also an example of how the followers of Jesus are to demonstrate their love for him. They will do this by loving one another as he has loved them. The way he has loved them is demonstrated in the foot washing where he serves his disciples as an equal, servant to servant. Implied here is a certain radical equality in the way of, that Christians are to love one another. It is a radical equality initiated by Jesus himself in his saving action of washing his disciples' feet. And likewise, there is radical equality in the ultimate saving event of Jesus dying for all people on that cross. This, my friends, is what is implied in the intimate connectedness of the Passover, the Eucharist, and the washing of the feet. The symbolism in this liturgy is extremely rich. The theology of salvation, amazingly powerful. Over these next few days, take some time out. Dwell on these salvific moments. These are our moments. These are the moments that Jesus gave us to save us all from our sins. Those designated to have their feet washed, please come forward and follow our MC's direction.
Please stand. In this time of the Lord's Passion, Christ offered prayers and supplications to the Father with loud cries and tears. Let's humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. Our response is, sanctify your people redeemed by your blood. Sanctify your people redeemed by your blood. Remember, Lord, your holy church and the unity of all churches. Grant your perseverance to all peoples that desire holiness, in particular, all catechumens and candidates. We pray. Sanctify, Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Remember, Lord, Pope Francis, all who guide your church and those who rule in civil office, Fill them with wisdom, compassion, integrity, justice, and a truthful vision, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Remember, Lord, Father Jim. May he continue in obedient, humble, and faithful service to God, guiding those in his pastorate with wisdom, compassion, and prayer, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Remember, Lord, those who bend in service to our faith community and are devoted to strengthening and deepening the life of Most Blessed Sacrament Parish, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Remember, Lord, those who grow wheat or tend to grapes, those whose hands bring forth the harvest, and the Cistercian sisters who make our hosts, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Remember, Lord, those who this night hunger for the Eucharist and those who hunger for daily bread, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. For our own needs, for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep and gone to their rest in Christian faith, and for all who have desired of us to make mention of them in our prayers, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
the oil of the sick. May the sick who are anointed with his oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. Catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clements, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cassaginus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. <clears throat> in humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest 
in the sleep of peace. Grab them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and form a divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me.
Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel and be reminded tonight when you do leave, please do so in silence. But first we'll be transferring the blessed sacrament from the altar over to the side altar here where the repository is. The church will be open all night for anybody who wishes to privately spend some time with the Lord. And it will be open tomorrow all the way up to about 2.30, oh, well, no, sorry, about 12.30 or so, just prior to the service at our St. Peter's site tomorrow, which is at 1 o'clock. The Good Friday service tomorrow is at 1 o'clock at St. Peter's.